Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Bill McKeever. I'm a biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in Ventura. I'm going to discuss this afternoon um, hybridization uh, between native California tiger salamanders and um, non-native uh, tiger salamanders, uh, barred tiger salamanders, um, and developing management strategies. Um, in addition to these folks, I would like to thank uh, David Bradford and uh, Jamie Batasso for allowing me to speak today. Uh, this talk is going to be based upon some fine research uh, here, uh, uh, these individuals and these projects, and I'm not going to uh, delve deeply into uh, genetics, um, but will um, base my talk on much of what's uh, been done here. For more uh, you know, in-depth genetics, uh, consult uh, these sources. So some terms, though, hybridization and introgression. Hybridization, um, I find it helpful uh, in terms of California tiger salamanders to think of it in two, on two scales, and that's the, the initial introductions of uh, barred tiger salamanders into California, and then the introductions of these hybrid um, populations um, into um, um, native uh, ponds. And then introgression, I think of on the scale of um, at the pond where you have these uh, hybrid individuals repeatedly back crossing with uh, parental stock. So this is the cast of characters. There's the California tiger salamander. Um, and this is the barred tiger salamander. Uh, barred tiger salamanders were introduced into California uh, primarily beginning in the 40s and 50s. The main introductions occurred in uh, Monterey County in the Salinas Valley uh, from uh, central, uh, the central United States um, for uh, uh, fish bait and what uh, um, ranchers or, or landowners in the Salinas Valley uh, put uh, these uh, um, tiger sal or barred tiger salamanders into these ponds um, to raise them for bait for, uh, for uh, uh, the fish industry. And this is the distribution of a breeding population um, California tiger salamanders, there are three populations, uh, the, uh, distinct population segments. The Sonoma County population, which is federally endangered. The Central California population, which is uh, federally listed as threatened. And the Santa Barbara County population, which is uh, federally listed as endangered. Uh, we're going to deal with, uh, we're going to discuss uh, the Central uh, California distinct population segment, which is where, which is where the hybridiz hybridization issue is uh, um, the problem. Um, here are sites. Um, as of 2003 data, you can see that um, this is uh, the Salinas Valley, and, and this is uh, work by Fitzpatrick, uh, recent work by Fitzpatrick and Schaefer, and um, has uh, shown that this is uh, where the hybridization has, uh, has prim is primarily occurring. It's a real problem. But you can see there's other areas where it has happened, and it may be occurring in um, other areas, uh, like in Contra Costa County and perhaps Alameda County. We just need to investigate that further. But primarily, uh, the, the main introductions have been in this area. So management challenges. Uh, variation in appearance, uh, field identification alone is not uh, um, reliable just to, to differentiate between hybrids and uh, native California tiger salamanders. Thus, the need for obtaining and analyzing genetic samples. Um, we can obtain them, get people permitted to obtain them, but right now it's, it's difficult to get them analyzed in a timely manner. Um, determining degrees of hybridization so that we can develop uh, um, recovery actions um, and developing um, these rec recovery actions on genetics um, and metapopulation dynamics. Um, breeding locations, um, most of the breeding locations for California tiger salamanders and these hybrids are on privately owned land. So this, is, uh, this poses, uh, it poses difficulties, but it also can, uh, um, it, it can be something we can work with. So native uh, California tiger salamanders and hybrids in the, um, in the rule listing, uh, the central population as threatened in 2004, um, we stated that we're not distinguishing between hybrids and native California tiger salamanders. Um, back to that visual ID uh, bullet a couple slides earlier, this is an example. Um, as biologists with the Fish and Wildlife Service, you know, there's great research going on out there with California tiger salamanders, but you know, there's also projects going on and, and consultants doing research and working for projects. You know, on a practical level, they contact us and they say, you know, hey, we find these individuals that are appearing a little different. As an example, this, happened, this was this year, there were uh, two individuals, this individual and this one caught in the same uh, general location. Uh, most of the individuals looked like this, and then there was this individual. 
Uh, this was another study site nearby, and uh, most of the individuals looked like this. So if you kind of com combine them, and you start, you know, the consultants will even admit, it's just like they start, you know, shaking their heads, you know, what are the, what are they looking at? Um, you know, so the, we need to go beyond just, um, obviously, the phenotype of the individual. Again, this is visual identification. Um, this, this individual here, sort of what you'd think would be a classic uh, California tiger salamander, this one with extensive barring. We actually removed this individual, and it's in, our, in a terrarium in our office, um, not to be reintroduced again. But this poses a problem because we need to be consistent with how we deal with this, and, so, and this isn't a consistent approach. We, we did remove that individual, though. But it does highlight that we need to develop a consistent approach with dealing with uh, these hybrids. So management implications. Um, management strategies need to differ based on location and degree of hybridization and integration. As I mentioned earlier, there's a, a high degree of uh, hybridization in the, um, in the Salinas Valley in, in Monterey, but we need to investigate uh, where else uh, hybridization may be occurring and where other introdu introductions may have occurred. Um, and thus, we need a uh, need for more genetic, genetic monitoring of, um, of populations throughout the range of tiger salamanders, of California tiger salamanders. And then what are the ecological consequences of hybridization? Um, uh, Fitzpatrick's and uh, Schaefer's work has found that, uh, that introduced alleles are significantly more common in perennial aquatic habitats than in uh, ephemeral aquatic habitats. Now, um, in California, uh, and this, this favors introduced, uh, introduced uh, barred tiger salamanders that that come from uh, regions where it's more ephemeral in nature, their aquatic habitat, versus California where ponds are, are more ephemeral and they dry in, in May or June. So um, our modification of the habitat in California on a wide scale has, is favoring these introduced alleles. So I th and I think that's significant in terms of developing management strategies to uh, deal with this. So um, first, you know, there are many uh, strategies. These are a few that um, I would recommend. And of course, we need to develop a recovery plan. It was listed in 2004. So we need to re uh, develop a recovery plan for the uh, California tiger salamander. I have a plan or plans. There's three different populations. So we, you know, there may be more than one recovery plan. We need to develop a, a key uh, to s assist biologists in the identification of uh, native California tiger salamanders and hybrids. Um, if anything, just to, uh, to flag certain populations, and then we can, um, that we may need to continue uh, research at. Uh, contact genetic uh, and ecological research at uh, different locations. And very importantly, we need to uh, coordinate with private landowners uh, regarding some of these management actions. Um, for example, maintaining uh, ephemeral ponds and, and uh, to, try to, um, to try to select, if you will, for more native alleles or mimic the typical habitat of California tiger salamanders. Uh, research proposals, uh, this is an opportunity for, the fish, for uh, us at the Fish and Wildlife Service to reach out to uh, researchers, like in this room, and just let you know that um, their traditional Section 6 fundings, they're on a cycle and they're typically due by December of each year, so don't wait until October, like I did this year, to have an idea for research funding and, you know, has to wait till next year. So um, uh, get those proposals in early and, and coordinate with your uh, fish and game uh, and fish and wildlife service biologists. Recovery permits to handle California tiger salamanders, you need to be permitted, so, um, but that's um, just a procedural thing. So these are ag agency contacts uh, for California tiger salamanders. There are two offices uh, which deal with them. That's the Sacramento office and the Ventura office, and then these, uh, Fish and game offices deal with them, um, and uh, there's some contact information there. Um, that's it. Thanks. I can take some questions if there are any. Uh, yes, it's been found. Yeah, they they are interbreeding. Yeah, I I didn't mention that. It was um, yeah, they are inter interbreeding. But I think that's another, that is a, um, a, something that needs to be discussed. And um, uh, as I did mention, hybrids are uh, afforded protection under the act. Uh, we, have to, we have to determine the degree of hybridization in these individuals. And then in order to determine 
or you know whether we will um, eradicate populations as a recovery action or um, you know perhaps uh, try um, converting a pond to a more uh, perennial nature and then introducing um, native genes into that population and try to just kind of do the reverse um, of the introduction. So um, I, I'm currently aware of no um, plans to do that. 